la 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 Hag Sameach, my holy sisters and brothers, may you have joy in this festival. We're coming to the end of Sukkot. Tomorrow, beginning tonight, is the holiday Shmini Atzeres, which is its own holiday, beginning on the eighth day of Sukkot. Uh, and that's kind of like a VIP after party for those who feel close to the Lord. But this day is called Hoshana Rabba, uh, and it's a very special day. We're still basically at the beginning of the new year, during Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur, the days of awe, we were judged. It was a big trial for everybody in the world and we received a decree for the coming year. What would come for us in the coming year? And that decree was sealed on Yom Kippur. But because God loves us so much, he permits us to slip a note containing our prayers under that closed gate, as it were, and our prayers on this day are received and received with great love. This holiday actually has a very feminine energy uh, in, in, in Kabbalah, right, in the mystical side of Judaism, and it's this idea that God uh, feels a very motherly type of love. Uh, for us on this day, not so strict and stern and demanding as a father's love, but unlimited, you know, giving, giving, giving. God wants to give us what God wants to find ways to forgive us. God wants to find ways uh, to give us what we need and to give us a kind judgment for the coming year. So it's a very propitious day to pray for what you need for the coming year, to ask for forgiveness and to resolve to do better in those areas where we can all improve. Also wanted to share with you just a thought from today's daf, today's page from the Talmud. Uh, our daily class, AT Daily, is in hiatus because uh, I'm directing a movie. Nina and I wrote it. I'm directing. For those who haven't heard, we're in intense pre-production right now and we'll be going into production, God willing, uh, in November. And for that reason, AT Daily is on hiatus probably until the first or second week of January. I simply can't not, I cannot teach the daily class uh, and be the director of a large production, which is what's happening now. But when I can, I'd like to share a thought with you briefly. Uh, from the page of the day, the Talmudic page of the day in our Daf Yomi page of the day cycle. So today's Daf uh, is page 102 here in chapter 12 of Tractate Kasubas, the 15th volume of the Talmud. These are the laws of marriage contracts. Uh, and then here we're talking about the, the rights of a widow. Uh, and what can be stipulated for her and what she can demand from the estate, etc. And, uh, and also when a woman remarries, what her new husband undertakes to pay. And within that general discussion, we often draw from the laws of marriage contracts to the laws of creditors, uh, lenders, and borrowers in general. And there's this idea of a guarantor, right? Somebody who's going to step in on behalf of the borrower uh, and enable the borrower to get a loan uh, by saying, well, if he can't pay, I will pay on his behalf. However, the law changes a little bit if the guarantor steps in after the loan has already been made. After all, the lender made the loan. They signed their promissory note. They made an agreement between the lender and the borrower. So why would the guarantor step in later? And if he does, is his guarantee enforceable? Now, in certain cases, uh, even when you don't have an obligation to pay, if you undertake that you will pay someone a certain amount of money, even though you don't owe it, but you say, I'm gonna do it, it's a gift, really, but you say, I'm going to give you this money, and you do it in the presence of witnesses, and it's in writing, then it can become enforceable there's a lot of nuance to that body of law. But apropos that discussion, uh, it comes up 
that uh, Ben Nanas, who's that? Shimon Ben Nanas. He's a sage. Not that much is known about him. Uh, but I'll come back to who he was in one second. Ben Nana says within this discussion, if one person was strangling another, strangling another in the marketplace, meaning in public, and the one who was strangling the other was demanding money that is owed to him, right? So it's a lender who says, pay me, pay me. And he's so frustrated that he's not getting paid that he's literally strangling the borrower in a public place and so a friend of the victim comes along and says to the strangler leave him alone and i will give you what you are demanding from him so in that case the friend of the victim has he made an enforceable promise to pay what the borrower owes the lender when he really just came along in a very emotional state and said okay listen leave him alone leave him alone stop strangling him. i'll pay what you owe and then later, the lender says, okay, now I don't have to go to the borrower for money. I'm going to you, the friend, the guarantor, who said in public that you'll pay his loan. So now has this friend who came along and say, I'll pay on behalf of the borrower, has he made an enforceable promise? And Bananas says, no. The friend of the victim is exempt from having to make any payment. Why? And this is because the creditor who originally lent the money to the borrower did not lend that money based on his trust in the friend of the victim as the friend promised to repay the loan only after the money had been loaned. And the same should apply in the case of the guarantor who comes after the contracts were already signed. Right, so if you're trying to get a guarantee from a third party on a loan between a lender and a borrower, you're going to have to really be careful to document that guarantee in a way that's going to be enforceable or it might not be enforceable. Like I said, there's a lot of nuance to this body of law uh, and especially modern times. If you're creating a guarantee, you should have a lawyer. And if it's going to be in, the, in a religious context, make sure that you consult with a rabbi about it. But on the underlying principle... Uh, of being careful with, uh, with monetary law. Here on Hoshana Rab, it's interesting that this page occurred today. There are no accidents. And listen to this teaching about the sage making this statement, Ben Nanas. Shim, Rabbi Shimon Ben Nanas was a contemporary of Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Yishmal. We do not have information about the events of his life. We know only that his teachings and disputes with his contemporaries are found mainly in the Mishnah. In the source of this passage that we're discussing here, which is from Bava Basra, page 175b, the following words of praise for him, for Shimon ben Nanas, are stated by Rabbi Yishmael. One who wants to acquire wisdom should occupy himself with monetary law. And one who wants to occupy himself with monetary law should serve Shimon ben Nanas. One who wants to acquire wisdom should occupy himself with monetary law. Now we like to think, well, there's two different areas of our lives. There's the area where we're growing in wisdom and that has to do with being a good member of the community or a good parent, learning how to show kindness to others in various ways, learning how to solve problems. That's the realm of wisdom. I'm sorry about this helicopter flying overhead. We'll try to pause for a second and let it go. Fly away helicopter, right? And it's another realm of our lives, money, right? Money, doing business. Okay, that, that, that's disjoint from that area where I want to be a mensch and grow in wisdom and grow, grow, grow closer to God and to my fellow human beings. Uh, money is just the realm of business. And what we're learning here from Shimon Ben Nanas is, no, 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 the realm of money is absolutely part and parcel of our lives. And in fact, it's that area where it is sometimes most challenging and most important to be a mensch, to do the right thing, uh, to, to fear God and honor God and honor the tradition and honor the teachings of your parents uh, and, and tie your money 
to your faith. And this isn't some kind of an appeal to give to some particular cause or other, just the opposite. This is an idea that when you're making your accounts and when you're figuring out, well, I need to tithe, I need to give my 10% to charity. Have I been careful in accounting for all of my income and making sure that I don't round off in my favor. I just did this today. I realized, you know what? I, we received a return uh, of, of some money that we had invested some weeks ago, uh, and it was like a return of principle. But then I thought, wait a minute, wait a minute. Along with that principle came some income, and I wasn't careful to make sure that that part of the return that was income that I had moved 10% over to our charity account so that I could distribute it to our charitable causes. And so it was a good day, Hoshana Rabbah, to be careful, to be meticulous, to go back. No, 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 I didn't transfer it. Now let me make sure that I've transferred it. Uh, and that is one of the ways to grow in wisdom, right? So you should always be thinking, I got to be the mensch. I got to act like an honorable person. Uh, when it comes to these accounts that come in and out and I'm busy and I'm in a hurry, but I got to make sure that I am allotting what is for charity to charity. And that's a good thought to have today on Hoshana Rava and a good lesson from Shimon Ben Nanas. May you be blessed with a good kvittel, with a good decree from heaven for this holiday season. And as we enter the new year, May you be blessed with love, with forgiveness, uh, with all good things and blessings from the one above. And may you transmit such blessings to your loved ones and the people you care about in your life. Hag Sameach.